I'm wondering if that's him all the way down there. Oh my god, it might be. <laughs> they were supposed to come, well, the highway's this way, but whatever. I think that's him. Holy cow. Yep. Here we go, folks. Go right over here. Yeah. <laughs> I like how we never even confirmed on, on the guy. I think it was just understood. And now we wait. The riggers, uh, they were here like 8.15, so when we knew this guy wasn't coming until 11, they went back to their shop and are coming back here in a minute. So I'm gonna, uh, well, let's go take a look, actually. Judd. <laughs> Not much to see. Pretty well tarped, actually. I thought, of, I honestly thought I was gonna see the Haas wrapper stuff that you see, like that Tyvek. Hey, Judd. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Where we see a little Haas. Yeah, what do you think, bud? That's from California. Whoa. Hey, hey, Jeff, what do you think? Smell. So that's the fifth. Cutting open the uh, plastic now. Looks like there's all these instructions, but it looks like you got four bolts, which we, we need to take this off at first and put it on the ground so that you know, the trailer can get out of here and then we lift the machine off the pallet and move it in or something like that unloading the skates which we'll use to roll it in which i hope we can do which would be nice because then we don't have to have the weight of the, the giant forklift plus the machine on top of it because i really don't want to crack my floor so the skates will be great if they work and we get them unloaded. Woo! Fifth is off. Here comes the big boy. God, look at those front wheels. Holy cow. just a hair because the forks are a little too thick. No big deal. We can see it. So this is one of those forklifts where the ass end will, I think the wheels too, will um, go all the way back for, you know, counterweight gives you a lot more lifting capability because 
The limitations of these forklifts are not the hydraulics, or not their sheer lifting ability, it's the balance. You got this load here on the end, so adding counterweight gets, lets you lift more. I, I don't think we have to do that today. This is, as much as I think 16,000 pounds is a shitload of weight, it's actually not that much. Uh, but these guys were talking about doing a, I think they got a 6080, so a 60,000 pound forklift that's got a, a counterweight that'll let them lift 80,000 pounds. Woo! See a rollback? There we go. You see the trailer lift up. We're clear. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. I'm not the uh, rigging crew here. I'm just a, a very enthusiastic new owner. Oh my gosh, look. Look. Here we go. Look at him. Oh. These guys are smooth. They, you know, they know uh, you got to be gentle when you hit switch directions and start and stop with these. At least the same company that we used actually card here to that video on rigging the other machines uh, that we just bought. A bunch of old manual equipment, not this heavy, but you know, lathes are a little bit uh, peculiar to move. And actually, that radial arm drill is uh, notorious for hurting. Cool. Okay, so we're going to lower it and then figure out what we got to do with the crate. Here we go. So we're gonna drive the machine around back on the crate or uh, pallet because obviously that's a lot more stable, um, both because it's a pallet, but also when we take it off the pallet, I believe will be metal on metal. You know, we may throw some rubber or wood underneath there, but uh, their comment was obviously spot on, which is let's move it uh, as far as we can like this. Look at it. It's funny, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's not as big as I thought. Now, now it's starting to look full size. Holy Nikes. I also just realized I swore earlier on video and it's kind of funny. I really, I, I don't have anything against swearing. I, for some reason, don't on our YouTube channel. And uh, I think I did once and somebody thought it was hilarious. So uh, I don't really know what to make of that, but yeah. I was wrong too. Uh, so this is a 40,000 pound forklift, but it does not uh, kick out the end. So it's just 40,000 like this. There's no extender option that gives you more counterweight. The back end is a weight, it just doesn't telescope out. Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, you're driving blind, huh? <laughs> you're driving real blind. that piston, holy cow. Yeah, I can't remember whether I mentioned this already or not, but I believe it was the same driver that actually picked it up at the factory. So I kind of thought they'd be some sort of a handoff, uh, not necessarily moving the trailer uh, or the machine, but rather just you know, switching a different truck or a different driver with the same trailer, but uh, I was wrong. I also wonder, maybe he dropped something off. I don't think so, because uh, I think he, I think he came straight here, so I don't think he had any other machines on it. We're also trying to figure out which is the front, and um, I'm pretty darn sure you can see the tool changer that that's uh, we're looking at the front, but uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to find one more clue. To make sure somehow I'm not mistaken. I mean, the tool changer is on the left side, so I'm pretty sure that's enough of an indicator. How's it on that side? All right. Pretty good. Real good. Plenty of room over here if he wants to come this way. It's funny you guys want to talk about uh, entrepreneurship for a second, uh, and you know that belief in what you do. Gene Haas, as I understand, I don't remember the exact year, something like 83 or 86, thought there was a better way to build a 5C indexer and built one and took it to, to IMTS. And folks, sure, you can argue it's a little bit more competitive in, in a cutthroat world and more innovation, but you know what? You probably said the same thing back then and 
boy, nowadays you could do that for, you know, hundreds or a few thousand dollars than Arduino and get something working. Um, not to discredit what Gene did, but, uh, you know, he took that and it grew from there and snowballed from there. And, you know, now you're looking at, I think, if not the largest, one of the largest machine tool providers in the world uh, and certainly a dominant force. And, you know, yeah, they spend a lot of money on marketing compared to some of the other guys, but I'll tell you, it's a, obviously a, a multi-billion dollar company. And that's really, you know, it's really not that old. It's, uh, it's definitely younger than I am, and I'm probably a pretty young machine owner. It goes back to actually the chip break uh, yesterday, talking about, you know, belief in what you do and not ignoring, or, and ignoring the noise. Because I'll tell you, that's a great example of a company that's had a lot of noise around it. Lots of people love to rag on uh, companies like Haas. And uh, I'll tell you, um, I think they've done a great job from my research of really building an incredible quality and brand and value, particularly in the recent years. Um, I'm not an expert, but perhaps there was some credit to some of the criticisms 10 years ago. Uh, but it's also, you know, hey, the more you succeed, the more people are gonna wanna talk about you and, and rag on you and drag you down and uh, just keep on doing what you're doing, make a great product. I gotta tell you, everyone I've talked to with Haas, you know, we've had a number of folks that actually work at the factory who have emailed us. They take pride in what they do. That's really cool, like that's awesome. I feel a connection to it um, that I definitely didn't come close to feeling with anybody uh, anybody else that I was really talking to. And no, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best machine, but boy, it's part of the puzzle. So I don't know exactly what we're doing here. I'm kind of curious. I suspect we're going to do a transfer down here and not go up the, you know, it doesn't look like much of a grade, but it is. Um, but they're the experts. We'll see. Lowering it down, trying to get it um, a little bit level so that we can do some work on it. I think, uh, I think they wanted to cut some of the wrapping off and just understand what we got, uh, their concern was these forks are so thick. I still got about eight inches, six inches. They're, the forks are so thick that it may not fit between the machine casting and the wood pallet. I don't think that's a, you know, I don't think that's going to end our day here, but uh, they're, I think they want to figure that out. I'm actually just excited to cut it off too. Okay, we just tore the plastic wrap off and then this like heavier duty thing. And then look at this, it's like a, like one of those space blankets. I'm torn because I want to help, but uh, but I also uh, uh, want to film here. VF3 bag, interesting. Um, that's this looks like it's sealed or not. I think this is sealed, guys. Looks like it's a crimp, like a heat crimp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just cut. Be careful, Jerry. When cut it. Cut it. Yeah. Oof, in there. there she is. There she is. This is why you hire good riggers. I actually don't know exactly what we're doing. There's been a lot of discussion over how to safely lift it. You can lift it from the top. I don't think we're doing that. Uh, I think we're gonna try to come in lengthwise. Uh, and the machine will have to go through the door this way regardless. We knew that because this X width is, is too much. Uh, the door's not wide enough. So we knew that. Um, and then it's a question of when do we put it on the skates? Uh, we could drive it all the way in with the forklift. We could put it on skates here and push or pull it in. Uh, skates obviously aren't gonna roll as great on this. Or ideally you would uh, leave the forklift on the asphalt and lay the machine into the bay, onto the skates, 
Um, they said the skates actually might tear up the floor a little more than the forklift because the skates are harder metal that still have some pretty big dings and chips in them. Uh, whereas the tires, uh, they're hard tires, not pneumatic, but they're still a little bit more cushion and you could clean them up. So we'll see. on camera I think it's I think it's moving up it's funny how small our little forklift is yep holy cow well we're not out of the woods yet but that's a helm Say hi. Hi. Jen, what do you think? What do you think, buddy? What do you think? What do you think? We're not out of the woods yet. We got to deal with the skates to lower, or the jacks to lower it off of the skates. Pretty cool that you can push a 16,000 pound machine in on those skates. The same skates that we used last time. Uh, just amazing. Here she is, though. Look at it. Look at it. Looks a little naked because the controller is right there. And on the left side will be some tool trays and accessories and stuff. Uh, yeah, got some, most of my stuff up there. Ethernet, air, power lines, electricians should be here in, in an hour or two. And rock and roll, right? Riggers just left. I've got a bunch of boxes down there I need to move over. Uh, we were rolling a skate back, just an empty skate, and we learned that there is a weak spot in the floor. You could hear it. Here she is. So the task at hand right now, electrician is on his way, or will be here in a few minutes, um, taking a look at the main ends, which I'm assuming is this right here. And what did I just notice I wanted to mention? You had to cut this uh, tape. I couldn't even read it, but it uh, looks like it was a thing to make sure nobody had opened this thing before you did. So yeah, here we are. Do a full walk around. It's still funny how naked it looks without the controller. Oh man, so it's 4.54 and I was all excited to keep working. I am exhausted. It went 
great. Most importantly, the machine is in and you have to tell Haas that air and power are hooked up before they'll schedule their service tech. I talked with them and told them that would happen and so they did schedule it for tomorrow, which is mostly a, a big deal because they don't do anything on Friday and then that would mean next week and next Monday and I wanna make chips. Um, oh man, wow. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, we did find a hollow spot uh, underneath the floor where the obviously the surface beneath the concrete pad has settled. So I'm kind of glad that we didn't use the forklift to drive over that, but rather skated it in and look at it. And I started putting this car together, but I don't really think I need it because all of my tools are going to fit in the holder. A lot of boxes and stuff. I'm, I'll, I'll do a um, time lapse tomorrow when the service tech comes and we do go through more stuff. We hooked up the power piece of conduit right up there. Got my air coming in over here. Big thanks to my buddy Tyson Lamb at Lamb Crafted for some last minute advice on what to use in terms of air hose and connectors and so forth. And I was gonna literally climb in it, but it's covered in this like blue grease stuff. And I don't, I'm exhausted, I don't wanna deal with that. So folks, thank you. More to come. Yeah.